Satya Yato Liriyad Itaratas Charte Suavigya Swarad Janma Dhyasa Yatam Vayar Itaratas Charte Suavigya Swarad Tene Brahma Hridaya Adikavaye Muyanthi Atsura Yaha Tene Brahma Hridaya Adikavaye Mujantija Suraya Ejo Varimadam Yata Vinimayo Yatra Trisargomesha Tejo Varimrida Yata Vinimayo Yatra Trisagumusha Dhamna Svena Sada Nirasta Kuhakam Satyam Param Dimahi Dhamna Svena Sada Nirasta Kuhakam Satyam Param Dimahi O my Lord, Shri Krishna, Son of Vasudeva O my Lord, Shri Krishna, Son of Vasudeva O all-pervading personality of Godhead O all-pervading personality of Godhead For my respectful obeisances unto you Offer my respectful obeisances unto you. I meditate upon Lord Sri Krishna because He is the absolute truth. I meditate upon Lord Sri Krishna because He is the absolute truth. And the primeval cause of all causes. And the primeval cause of all causes. Of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universe. Of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universe. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. And He is independent because there is no other cause beyond Him. And He is independent because there is no other it is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge into the heart of Brahmaji. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge on the heart into the mind. The original living being. The original living being. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations. Of water seen on fire or land seen on water. Of water seen on the fire, of land seen the water. Only because of him do the material universes. Only because of him do the material universes. Temporarily manifested by the reactions of the three modes of nature. Temporarily manifested by the reaction of the three modes of nature. Appear factual, although they are unreal. Appear factual, although they are unreal. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna. Who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode. Who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode. Which is forever free from the illusory, res uh, re illusory representations of the material world. Which is forever free from the illusory representation of the material world. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. Dharma Projita Kaitrovotra. Dharma Purujita Kaitavutra Paramo Nirmatsaranam Satam Paramo Nirmatsaranam Satam Vedyam Vastavam Atra Vastu Yivim Vastavam Astra Vastu Shivadam Tapa Trayon Shivadam Tapo Trayon Nanam Shimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite Shimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite Kimva Parir Ishwaraha Kimva Parir Ishwaraha Sadyo Hridi Avarudyate Tra Sadyo Hridi Avarudyate Tra Kriti bihi susu subhistakshanat. Kriti bihi susu subhistakshanat. Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth. This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth. Which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. Which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in the heart. The highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. The highest truth is the reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. Such truth uproots the threefold miseries. Such truth uproots the threefold miseries. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity. Is sufficient in itself for God realization. Is sufficient itself for God realization. What is the need of any other scripture? What is the need of the other scripture? As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam. As soon as one attentively submissively hears the message from Bhagavatam. By this culture of knowledge. By this culture of knowledge. The Supreme Lord is established within its heart. The Supreme Lord is established within his heart. Nigama kalpatoro galitam phalam. Nigama kalpatoro galitam phalam. Sukumaka amrita dravya samhitam. Sukumaka amrita dravya samhitam. Pibata bhagavatam rasam alayam. Pibata bhagavatam rasam alayam. Muhur aho rasika bhuvibhavaka. Muhur aho rasika bhuvibhavaka. O expert and thoughtful man, relish shimad bhagavatam. O expert and thoughtful man, relish shimad bhagavatam. The mature fruit of the desire to read Vedic literature. The mature fruit of the desire to read the Vedic literature. It emanated from the lips of Sri Sukadev Goswami. It emanated from the lips of Sri Sukadev Goswami. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Although its nectarian juice was already relishable for all. Although its nectarian juice was already relishable. 
including liberated souls. Including liberated souls. Shrinvatam Swakata Krishna. Shrinvata Swakata Krishna. Punya Shravana Kirtana. Punya Shravana Kirtana. Radiant Taksto Hi Abhadrani. Radiant Taksto Hi Abhadrani. Vidunoti Suritsatam. Vidunoti Suritsatam. To hear about Krishna from Vedic literature. To hear about Krishna from Vedic Lord. Or to hear from him directly through the Bhagavad Gita. Or to hear from him directly through Bhagavad Gita. Is itself righteous activity. Is itself a righteous activity. And for one who hears about Krishna. And for one who hears about Krishna. Lord Krishna is dwelling within everyone's heart. Lord Krishna is dwelling within everyone's heart. Acts as a best wishing friend. Acts as a best wishing friend. And purifies the devotee who constantly engages in hearing of him. And purifies the devotee who is constantly engaged in hearing of him. Nasta preesu bhadresu. Nasta preesu bhadresu. Nityam bhagavata sevaya. Nityam bhagavata sevaya. Bhagavati uttama sloke. Bhagavati uttama in this way, a devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. In this way, the devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. As he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam. As he hears more about Krishna from Bhagavatam. And from the devotees. And from the devotees. He becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. He becomes fixed in his devotional service of the Lord. Tadarajas tamo bhava. Tadarajas tamo bhava. Kamaloba dayasche. Kamaloba dayasche. Chaitari navidam. Chaitari tera navidam. Sitvam sattve prasiddhati. Sitvam sattve prasiddhati. By development of devotional service. By development of devotional service. Of the Lord. I'm oh. sorry. Uh, by development of devotional service, one becomes fixed. Uh, one becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance. By development of devotional service, one becomes free from. And thus, material lust and avarice are diminished. And thus, material lust and avarice are diminished. Evam prasanna manaso. Evam prasanna manaso. Bhagavat bhakti yoga taha. Bhagavat bhakti yoga taha. Bhagavat tattva vijnanam. Bhagavat tattva vijnanam. Mukta sangasya jayate. Mukta sangasya jayate. When these impurities are wiped away. When these impurities are wiped away. The candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness. The candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness. Becomes enlivened by devotional service. Becomes enlivened by devotional service. And understands the science of God. And perfectly. understands the science of God perfectly. Vidyate hridaya grantis. Vidyate hridaya grantis. Chidyante sarvasam saya. Chidyante sarvasam saya. Chiyante chasya karmani. Chiyante chasya karmani. Drusta evat manishvare. Drusta evat manishvare. Thus bhakti yoga serves the hard knot of material affection. Thus bhakti yoga serves the hard knot of material affection. And enables one to come at once to the stage of some say I'm a samagam. And enables one to come at once to the stage of some say I'm a samagam. Understanding of the supreme Absolute truth, personality of Godhead. Understanding of the ab, being supreme, absolute truth, personality of Godhead. Shrimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 16, Verse Number 21. Araksya mana striya urvi balan. Araksya mana striya urvi balan. So just ya to purusadir ivartam. So just ya ti ato purusadir. Bacham devim brahmakule kukarmani. Bacham devim brahmakule kukarmani. Abrahman ye raja kule kulagriyan. Abrahman ye raja kule kulagriyan. Translation by Shila Prabhupada. Are you feeling compunction for the unhappy women and children who are left forlorn by unscrupulous persons? Or are you unhappy because the goddess of learning is being handled by brahmanas addicted to acts against the principles of religion? Or are you sorry to see that the brahmanas have taken shelter of administrative families that do not respect brahminical culture? Purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. In the age of Kali, the women and the children, along with brahmanas and cows, will be grossly neglected and left unprotected. In this age, illicit connection with women will render many women and children uncared for. 
Circumstantially, the women will try to become independent of the protection of men, and marriage will be performed as a matter of formal agreement between man and woman. In most cases, the children will not be taken care of properly. The brahmanas are traditionally intelligent men, and thus they will be able to pick up modern education to the topmost rank, but as far as moral and religious principles are concerned, they shall be the most fallen. Education and bad character go ill together. But such things will run parallel. The administrative heads as a class will condemn the tenets of Vedic wisdom and will prefer to conduct a so-called secular state and the so-called educated brahmanas will be purchased by such unscrupulous administrators. Even a philosopher and writer of many books on religious principles may also accept an exalted post in a government which denies all the moral codes of the Shastras. The Brahmanas are specifically restricted from accepting such service. But in this age, they will not only accept service, but they will do so even if it is of the meanest quality. These are some of the symptoms of the Kali age which are harmful to the general welfare of human society. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. So here is a very serious indictment of the Brahminical class in Kali Yuga. And everything is, is, is trickled down. It begins from the top and it trickles down to the bottom. So as long as uh, as soon as the brahmanas become corrupted, the whole society becomes corrupted. And the only uh, solution to such pervas all-pervasive corruption is the Harinam Sankirtan movement. That's why Lord Chaitanya, when he came, he was questioned by Prakasananda Saraswati, who was a so-called first-class brahmana, why he was engaged in sentimental activity, chanting and dancing in the streets of Benares. He should be, rather, engaged in the serious study of Vedanta. And that's the real vocation of the Brahmanas. Was, that was Prakasananda's point of view. But Lord Chaitanya very respectfully disagreed with him. He said, well, to tell you the truth, my guru told me that I am uh, not very intelligent. And therefore he recommended that I always chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, and perform the Sankirtan Yajna. Sankirtan is a Yajna. It is a sacrifice. And the only sacrifice that can be properly performed in the Kali Yuga, all of the sacrifices that this puja or that puja will, are not performed properly because the brahmanas are not qualified to say the mantras correctly. And also, they have material purposes to accomplish through the performances of these jagyas. And they don't actually teach people that uh, these material benefits that you might receive through these per performance of uh, yagyas is not the real goal. It's simply a palliative measure to uh, satisfy your immediate material desires through the Vedic process of Jagya, but the real goal is, is to rise above such self-interested performances and come to the level of pure devotion to the Lord. Chaya gunya vishaya veda nistra gunya bhavarjana nirdvandva mahanirmukta bhajanti mamditarataha So, in the second chapter, Krishna tells uh, Arjuna, look, Arjuna, rise above the Vedas. The Vedas are dealing mainly with the three modes of material nature. Uh, you should rise above them and come to the level of pure devotion without any tent of influence by the modes of material nature. So this is already in the second chapter, Krishna is explaining this. Before that he says, yam yam, uh, yam, Imam Purusham Vacham Prabhadanti Abhibhashtitaha 
Vedavada Rata Partha Nanyat Astiti Vadina. He says, men of small knowledge are very much attached to the flowery words of the Vedas, which recommend various fruit of activities for elevation to heavenly planets, resultant good birth, power, and so forth. Being desirous of sense gratification and opulent life, they say that there's nothing more than this. Bhagaisvarya Pasaktanam Tayaparata Cheta Sam Vivasayatmika Budhir Samadona Vidyate. In the minds of those who are too attached to sense enjoyment and material opulence, and who are bewildered by such things, the resolute determination for devotional service to the Supreme Lord does not take place. So therefore, Brahmanas are supposed to have uh, a vow of poverty. They're supposed to be satisfied with less to have more time to perform devotional service and to uh, preach the glories of Lord Krishna. So the, the less one is encumbered by material preoccupations, the more they have time for spiritual life. And the more one is preoccupied by material considerations, the less time they have for spiritual life. So therefore, one... Uh, should keep it simple. That should be the motto of uh, material life, to keep it simple, not, get, not make it complicated. Just like previously in the 1940s and 50s and 60s, uh, car engines were relatively simple and, and spread out. So these American cars before were, were, were bigger now you have the Hondas and the Toyotas, and they're usually compact cars. But before the American cars were bigger, and the engine was not crowded. You could see each one of the parts of the engine, the, the uh, carburetor and the alternator and the uh, pump and this and that. They were all very easy to change. Nowadays, they make these really complicated engines with a lot of digital technology and you have to be like a, a, an Einstein to be able to fix them. And you have to have expensive equipment to diagnose what's wrong with the motor and so forth. And sometimes you have to take the whole motor out of the car to, re to repair things, right? So they've made things so complicated. That's purposely done so that you become more and more dependent. Before, if you had a 1955 uh, Ford pickup truck. You could you could repair it very cheaply and very easily because you could see every part and you could replace them and, and it was re rather cheap. Nowadays, if you get a Ford uh, 350 or you get a, a, uh, a Ram uh, 350 or whatever, it's very difficult to, to repair uh, for a lay person and you have to go take it into the service and then the guys that service it, they're going to charge you an arm and a leg every time you go in. So it makes people more dependent. Therefore, Prabhupada said, keep it simple. So when he was talking about New Vrindavan, he said, don't, don't, don't rely on machines, he said. Just do everything uh, with the cow and the bull and keep everything simple. And you don't, and you don't want to make a profit. Just try and break even. If there is extra production, you, then you can trade, you can, you can sell it. But the best thing is to be self-sufficient and live a simple life so you have time for chanting Hare Krishna, reading Bhagavatam, and engaging in devotional service. So therefore, uh, to do that, one must be free of excessive material desires. So therefore, try gunya vishaya veda, nishtray gunya bhavarja, nir dvandu nitya sattva so, nir yoga shema atmavan. When one becomes relatively free from uh, influence and modes of material nature, or completely free from them, then they also become free of dualities and from all anxieties for gain and safety. This is the main thing, gain and safety. One wants to make profit, and one wants to protect it. So when one doesn't have money, they're worried about getting money. When one gets a lot of money, they're worried about losing money. Both ways they're worried. You see? So the, the point is, you don't need a lot of money. You need some. You need some 
but if you're self-sufficient, you hardly need any money at all. Uh, and uh, there might be questions of paying uh, you know, property taxes and insurance and things like that, but it can be minimized. Or it can be zero, uh, depending where you live and how you live. So this gain and safety is, is one thing that people are preoccupied by almost their whole life. And also, dualities. Should I live in America? Should I move back to India? Should I work for Amazon? Should I work for uh, 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 Microsoft? Should I marry this person? Should I marry that person? Should I buy this car? Should I buy that car? Should I buy this stock or that stock? Everyone is overwhelmed with this, these dualities of life. However, we should be involved in monality, not duality. Monality means I should do everything for Krishna. If you, if you think like that, then you're no longer troubled by dualities. Just like where should I live? I should live there in that place where Krishna consciousness is most easily available and happily performed. Right? So that could be your United States or that could be India. Depends on the the most essential thing, which is association. And that's what we read yesterday, where uh, Prabhupada explained that uh, this, everything depends on the association one has. If one associates with unholy people, one becomes unholy. And if one associates with genuinely holy people or genuine devotees, one becomes a devotee. So yesterday I didn't read the last paragraph of the purport, so I'm going to read that right now. The materialistic men want to work hard and enjoy fruit of results for sense enjoyment. Thus they are committing many types of sins at every step of life. That's called panchaguna, panchasuna. Panchasuna means unperceived or... or uh, unperceived sins and there's five types we've discussed this before when you uh, do house cleaning you kill living entities when you drive a car you kill living entities or or ride a bicycle you kill living entities when you uh, are responsible for something like a, a temple or a, a business you're killing living entities and uh, when you uh, engage in business, you kill living entities, and so forth. We're killing living entities all the time, and we are responsible for all that killing, whether we're conscious or unconscious of it. Or, so that's, uh, that's why devotees should always be chanting Hare Krishna. And the karmis who have material desires but are pious, they should always be doing sacrifices. So here it says, thus they are committing many types of sins at every step of life. That's because... They work hard in order to enjoy fruit of results for sense enjoyment. So they're committing many sins at every step of life. Those, however, who are consciously engaged in the devotional service of the Lord are transcendental to all varieties of sin and virtue. And now why does it say free from all varieties of sin and virtue? Because a person who's only in the mode of goodness, not in transcendental goodness, is still committing sin. Uh, because they have a want. As soon as you say, I want something, uh, you're going to be engaged in some sin. And someone will say, well, how can you say I don't want anything? Well, it depends what you want. If you want Krishna, then there's no sin involved because Arjuna committed tremendous sins, sins that are most damnable in society today, but he was sinless. Can anyone, anyone explain why? Although he complained, to, yes? He was acting only on behalf of Krishna. He did not have any personal motive other than to please Krishna. And he followed Krishna's instructions exactly. So when so Yudhisthira was asked to follow an instruction by Krishna and he hesitated. And because of that, he had to suffer. Uh, Arjuna hesitated in the beginning, but after, but first he surrendered to Krishna because he realized he didn't know what to do. And then he asked Krishna many tough questions 
And Krishna answered every one of his questions perfectly. And then Arjuna completely surrendered. From that point on, there was no more doubting, no more hesitation, just doing what Krishna wanted him to do. And Krishna wanted him to do things that would be considered sinful. For example, he killed Karna while his back was turned. He was off his chariot. He was trying to fix the wheel of his chariot that had been broken in the war. And Krishna says, shoot him, kill him. And you're not allowed to do that. You're not allowed to kill a person who's not armed, who's got their back to you. But he did it, right? Because Krishna told him to do it. And many different things uh, happen in the Battle of Kurukshetra that, that are bewildering to uh, those people who are strict moralists. But the highest morality is doing what Krishna tells you to do. Now, that's hard for many people to understand. That's why there are very few devotees. Because Manushyanam Sastri Su Kashit Shati Siddhaik Tatatam Api Siddhanam Kashit Mam Viti Tatvataha. You know, out of many thousands and thousands of people, one may try for perfection, and out of many thousands and millions of people, only one will know Krishna in truth. So it's a rare thing to become a devotee. Just like in, in Seattle, there's like you know, uh, at least in the city of Seattle, there's at least one million people living. And outside the city, in the greater Seattle area, is about close to four or five million people. But how many devotees are there? What do you th how, many, how many devotees do you think there are in Seattle? No. I mean, real devotees. Not, not, not just people that come to Ananda Mela. <laughs> Uh, yeah, something like that. It's not more than that. So out of 5 million people, there's only about 150 people that are following Krishna consciousness strictly. right? So uh, what does that mean? That means we're not preaching enough. That's what it means. Because if you convince 1% convince of a population, the whole population will eventually become Krishna conscious. All you need is 1%. So what's 1% of 5 million? Is it 50,000, is it? Or, yeah, uh, or 5,000? I think it's 50,000. Is it 50,000? Uh, no, it's... Anyway, either 5,000 or... I think it's 5, uh, 50,000, yeah. So we have to work really hard. We have a big job ahead of us. We have to make... We have to go from 150 to 50,000 to be able to change Seattle from Malecha da Dhamma to Vaikuntha Dhamma. Okay. And it's possible. It is possible to do. So, but we have to be determined, and the way to do it is through Sankirtan and massive book distribution and prasadam distribution. Okay, so here we say that uh, sacrifice is the means of counteracting such accumulated sins. The demigods are pleased when such sacrifices are performed. Just as a prison of, just as prison officers are satisfied when the prisoners are turned into obedient subjects. Lord Chaitanya, however, has recommended only one yagya or sacrifice called the Sankirtan Yagya, the chanting of Hare Krishna, in which everyone can take part. Thus, both devotees and fruit of workers can derive equal benefit from the performances of Sankirtan Yagya. So I didn't read that yesterday, but I wanted to read it today. That is why Lord Chaitanya told Prakashananda Maharaj, he said, well, you know, my, my guru said it. I'm not quite, you know, up to you guys in intelligence. And uh, therefore, he recommended I just chant Hare Krishna and dance. Now, this just chanting Hare Krishna and dancing is the most exalted thing one can do. This is what this is what Narada Muni is doing. This is what Brahma does when he hears the holy name. This is what Lord Shiva does when he hears the holy name. They dance and they chant Hare Krishna. Okay. So therefore, follow the best and leave the rest. Right? Follow the best and leave the rest. So who should we follow? Should we follow 
the uh, persons who are doing yagyas for personal gain. Om Jai Jagadish Hare. I need a new house. And Om Jai Jagadish. And I need a new car. Om Jai Jagadish. And I need this. And I need that. That's not the purpose of Om Jai Jagadish Hare. The purpose is that we pray to the Lord, please, my Lord, always engage me in your service. And that's all I want. I just want your service. I don't want to, I don't even care about going to Vaikunta or Goloka. Wherever your service is done by sincere devotees, you are also present. So please, let me always be engaged in your service. This is the meaning of the Hare Krishna mantra. So when this age of Kali began, the first victims and the most, let's say, uh, vulnerable persons are women and children, along with brahmanas and cows. So we see today that the position of women and children and brahmanas and brahmanas and cows are is very precarious. There's always something going wrong. You just read the newspaper every day and you'll see there's something going wrong all the time. In fact, there's a uh, a uh, the election is going on now, and one of the things you have to vote on is giving permission to the superintendent of schools in the Seattle area the right to teach about homosexuality in first grade, beginning from first grade. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. Right now they can do it in fifth grade. Right? They want to go down to first grade. Then next year they'll go down to kindergarten. And then next year, you know, they'll go to, uh, you know, right when a baby is born in the hospital, they put something in their ears and they start... Uh, telling them about homosexuality so they know what it's all about. You know. So you see, <laughs> this is like crazy. But no, this is what's going on. So women and children and then brahmanas and cows, they're in very difficult this situation in this age. And it says, they will be grossly neglected and left unprotected. That's like a, a rap song, grossly neglected and left unprotected. Right? But that's, that's the fact. And therefore, at least in Krishna consciousness, we should give utmost protection and respect to women and children and brahmanas and cows. In fact, if a person comes to the temple and they see that the women and children are happy and the brahmanas are real brahmanas, they're not greedy and lusty for money and things like that, and the cows also are happy. They say, wow, something good is happening here. But if they come to the temple and they see women and children are in distress and the men are uh, talking big philosophy but doing nonsense and the brahmanas are, uh, uh, you know, uh, this puja costs so much, that puja costs this much, and this costs that much. And there's a big sign on the temple wall, you know, uh, Boga for uh, uh, lunch, $150. And this thing, $70. And this thing, $50. And this thing, you know, if, if it looks like it's a money-oriented place and people are running around, uh, you know, trying to force people to, to, to buy things and, th and, and so forth, then they say, wait a minute, there's something wrong here. Uh, I, I want to be in a more, you know, peaceful environment where people are happy, and they're interested in me, not in my pocketbook, right? So all these things are noticeable even by the most degraded karmi. They notice if someone is greedy or not greedy. They notice if someone is in really interested in them or just interested in, in selling them a book or selling them something. So no one can hide their real intentions. And, and therefore, if we have only pure intentions, then Krishna will help us and everything will become transcendental. But if we have selfish intentions, there's no way of hiding them. And even the most materialistic person will notice it. And they will test the devotees to see if they're really interested in them or not. So 
we have to be careful because we are being scrutinized. Every little thing we do is being scrutinized by the outside people. Don't think it's, it's not happening. And if they see selfishness, if they see lustiness, if they see any of these normal karmi behaviors in the devotees, then they, they have a, you know, then they feel confident. I can walk out of here and never come back and I've done the right thing. See? Okay, so the Brahmanas are traditionally intelligent men and thus they will be able to pick up modern education to the topmost rank. Now this is a fact. If you read the history of uh, in, you know, what happened in India after 1825, the British became very, very focused on destroying Vedic culture. They, were, they, they wanted to do that from the beginning, but they became expert at it. How? By getting information from the Brahmanas. So Lord Macaulay, he asked the South Indian Brahmin, he said, what is it about you people? You know, you, you people follow rules, you, you're satisfied with little, you, you're, your fam families are happy, there's not so much crime here. If you go to London, it's a dangerous place. You know, you have Jack the Ripper and this guy and that guy, they're all crazy people running around killing uh, our own people and, and uh, everyone's in anxiety. But, but your people are happy. So what is it about it, about you? And the Brahmana said, well, uh, we uh, respect Brahmanas, and cows, and women, and children, and elderly people. And, it's, and it's, we give a lot of respect to the cows. We protect them. He said, oh, now I understand. You know what he did? He opened up the first slaughterhouse in Mumbai. And now there's 36,000 of them in India. He purposely did that. When he understood uh, the, the special respect given to cows, and somehow or other that was related to the prosperity and the happiness of the people, he started the first slaughterhouse. So, so this is the problem we have. You had, in India, after that, they also uh, undermined the whole educational system that was being practiced. The educational system was very simple in India. It was right down on the village level, and the government permitted uh, large uh, tracts of land to be harvested, and the proceeds go to supporting those schools, the teachers, and irrigation in the village. So it was a self-sufficient system, and the teachers were not all brahmanas. I mean, there were many teachers also, only like 40% of the teachers in those little village schools were brahmanas. There were also lay people teaching kids practical things, you know, farming and sewing and, 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 and then morality and so forth. And, and, and the brahmanas were teaching mostly the scriptural stuff. So we see that there was a, a very good, and there was hardly any illiteracy at that time. So the British, first of all, to, oh listen, you know, this is a little too much management for you people, you know, in, in the villages. Let us take over the schools, and we'll, we'll guarantee you that it'll be really first-class education, and you'll have to worry about this and work so hard, uh, you know, uh, plowing those fields and, pl and planting them in order to get some money to support the school. I mean, we'll take care of you. And the people accepted it, unfortunately. And what happened? They eliminated any vernacular language teaching in those schools. I mean, it's, if it was, it was in, in Andhra, there was no more teaching Telugu. Everything had to be done in English. Secondly, they eliminated the land allocation for the support of the schools. So now everything was dependent on the British and their taxation. Third, it turned, they gave more attention to the Brahmin kids than to the normal uh, village kids because they saw they were very intelligent. And thus they corrupted those kids with British nonsense. And, and then after, uh, by the time you get to the 1930s, like 100 years later, Gandhi gives a speech in, to, in the British uh, in the, to the British, uh, some kind of uh, uh, official organ uh, meeting, 
And he said, you ruined our red education system. You've ruined a, 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 a four or five generations of our youth. And now there's a lot of illiteracy. And, and where, where before there was hardly any illiteracy. So you've, you've ruined our culture. He gave, you should read the speech that he gave. It was in 1930. And you know, he was really lamenting the fact of what the British had done in a 100-year period. And then people started to hate the Brahmanas because the Brahmin kids got, w did better, excelled in education, the British education, and therefore they started taking jobs that were normally given to the normal people. And they became hated by the normal people. See? And that's why in places like Kerala and Bengal and other places, Brahman and Tamil Nadu, they're hated even till today, because of that class separation that took place, and it, was, and it was fermented by the British, and the Brahmins fell for it. And then the Brahmins became corrupted. They started also, uh, like I said, infiltrating into the jobs, uh, government jobs, as well as other, uh, other types of jobs. And, and there was a big backlash against them. Like now, if you're a Brahmin and Kerala, or your Brahmin and Tamil Nadu, you're looked down on. You know? So these things have happened, and it was all predicted 5,000 years ago by uh, the, the discussion that takes place between the bull, the cow, and Maharaj Pariksit. So what we're reading now is extremely important if you want to understand why there's so much turmoil in the world. So I'll stop right there. Are there any questions?